Hey everyone, Facet here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, and I got a bunch of different bikes, and I finally got a bike with a willing participant. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust the rebound damping on a bike, on the suspension. But first I'm gonna explain what the hell all this crap is so you could understand. Here's the bike, and you got the tire, right? If you hit a bump, the suspension compresses. After you hit the bump or you go over the bump, then it rebounds. So it goes up and it goes back down. If you can set it, that's really good because how fast it rebounds and what it's able to do, if you cannot set it or if you can't set it, it's gonna greatly affect how the bike handles big time. Because the main suspensions, the main job of the suspension is keeping the tires pushed down to the crown and maintain traction, right? If it's not adjustable, it's just gonna be too squishy and bouncy. That's just the easiest terms to think about it. And I'll explain what that means. So first I want you to understand, if you go up to any bikes, I want you to generally have an understanding of what bike is adjustable and what it is and what is not adjustable. Just basic information first. So come on over. Here's the Yamaha R3. What year is this? 2017. 2017. So if you look up at the top, it's just flat. There's no screwdrivers, there's no flat heads, there's no nothing. So this bike has non-adjustable suspension. In the front anyways. You can't do anything to it. If you look inside, right here, I want you to look inside. See that little collar thing? This is for the preload of the bike. Your bike only has rear preload where you can set the rear sag if you want to. So a quick uh, explanation of what that is. When I sit on the bike, so right now it's just sitting the way it is. When I sit on the bike, what happens to the suspension? It sinks or it sags down, it compresses. How much it does that depends on your weight and how strong the springs are, but you want it to sink down just enough to be in the right spot so the, t so the tire can actually do its job absorbing bumps. So think about the preload, right? This little collar right there, you can adjust it and click it down and it'll make the bike feel stiffer. So if you sit down it, you might not sing that much. Or if you're really, really light and you, or if you're really heavy and you sit down on the bike and it sinks too much, you have to add preload into it so it doesn't sink as much. So think about the preload as relation to sag as air in an air mattress. I get an air mattress and I'm gonna start blowing it up. <laughs> All the way until there's no more air possible to put in that damn air mattress. If you sit on top of the air mattress with all the air possible in it, will you sink a lot or a little? A little. Barely. You're really gonna sink down. If I take air out of the air mattress, now you lay on top of the bike, what's gonna happen? You're gonna sink all the way down to the bottom. The air is the preload. If you put a lot of air or preload into the bike, it's not gonna sink that much. If you take all the preload out, you're gonna sink a lot. And you want it to sink down just enough, okay? So highly recommend, if your bike is adjustable, get your suspension set up for your weight. So let's say I jump on this bike, and let's say it's fully adjustable. If I sit on the bike and it still sinks down all the way, even with all that air, all the preload into the bike and it's still sinking down too much, I have two options. Buy stronger springs or go run around and lose weight. <laughs> right, because that's the way you need to do it. Right, so that's just an idea of what sag and preload is. So I just want you to understand. That's the only thing that's adjustable for this bike. You know, what year is the R6? 17. 2017 is fully adjustable. So I'll just give you an idea. And this has like the R1 forks, even though it's on R6. So you got the preload, we have T-E-N, which is rebound. It's the translation for Japanese bike called rebound. So that's tension or rebound. Then we have compression. So this has all three fully adjustable. The rear has the same, just so you can see at it, right? Come take a look at the Harley right here. What year is this one? 2019. 2019 Harley, whatever this is. What is it, 1200? Sportster. Sportster. You can look at the front, pretty much like all Harleys. It's pretty much the same thing. Non-adjustable suspension in the front. And if you look at the rear right here, this does has rear preload. So this top collar, if I go to loosen it up, this one just holds the rear collar down, but this rear collar, you see how much, you see how many more levels of how you could crank it down? This is the preload. So if I weigh 500 pounds and I jump on this bike and it's sinking a lot, I turn this bottom collar, I crank it down, and that's like adding air into the air mattress so it won't sink as much. So the only capability of this bike, same thing as the R3, is rear preload adjustment. There's no damping adjustments at all. One more example, we'll take a look at this. This is a 2016 KTM 390 Duke. Again, you should just be able to look at the front of the bike. You look at the tops right here, there's nothing. There's no screws, there's no levers, there's, there's non-adjustable. Same thing with the rears, non-adjustable, no damping. But again, if you look up down there, there's the collar. And that collar, again, is just the preload. All right. So, let's take a look at this bike. This goes to a different tiny bike. Now, if you look up at the top, we have these triangle things that can spin. That's how you could add air into the air mattress or the preload. And then you see up on the top, you have the flathead screwdriver that says S and H, T-E-N. Remember, TEN is rebound. So this bike is fully adjustable in the front. And in the rear, here's the collar thing again. This is the preload again. And then on the top of the bike, the, re the rebound is on the top, on the front of the forks. On the back of the bike for the rear shock, now the rebound is on the bottom and the compression is on the top. That's, it's just the adjustability of it. But so overall, just based on what I said, hopefully you could go look at a bike and you could just be able to tell, which most people have no clue about, 
hey, that bike's fully adjustable, cool. If that's all you know, at least you have a general idea of what suspension is, right? And then you can ask somebody, did you get this set up for your weight? No. Now you know how important it is because it depends on how much you weigh, that's what you need to get set for your weight. If you fluctuate between five pounds, no big deal. But if you were 150 and you get up to one to 200 pounds and you're freaking a muscle guy now, that's a big difference. You need to get your suspension readjusted. You see what I'm saying? Because if you weigh too much, it's gonna sag too much and that's gonna really greatly affect your suspension of how much it'll compress or rebound, whatever else. Okay. So what you wanna do, we're gonna set the rebound. So that was just a general suspension information. To set the rebound, you could do that right now statically, like it means the bike's not moving. You could set the rebound right now and see what it's supposed to be and see how it's supposed to behave and why it's supposed to do that. You're not moving anywhere. You cannot do the compression like that because you, you can't push down hard enough to mimic a high speed bump when you're going 30 miles per hour. So to play with the compression damping of how hard it does that, you have to go find a bumpy road, off camber, camber, hit some bumps and feel how that feels and then you kind of play with it like that going back and forth on the bumpy road. But the rebound you could do right now, right? General information about damping. So you have these screwdrivers here again on the forks. If you could understand this, then you know what damping is. I'm not joking. All this is, these little flathead screwdriver things on the top, you're pushing a needle into a hole that restricts the amount of oil to flow. If you take the needle out, more oil can flow, it's gonna feel mushy, bouncy. We get it, right? <laughs> Who doesn't understand that? <laughs> so if it's really bouncing around and you have adjustable suspension, the needle might be too far out. It's gonna be bouncing all over the place. And that's bad because you hit a bump and it's gonna be bouncing around. It'll take a while to settle. And if you hit another bump and another bump and another bump, you're pretty much you're just bouncing around forever and there's no settlement. If it's too far pushed in, it's gonna, you're gonna hit the bump, but it won't have time to rebound because it's, it's, too, it's too restricted of the oil. It's like, it'll go very slowly, you hit another bump, and pretty soon the suspension is completely compacted up and has no time to actually go into a hole. So if your bike is adjustable, it's extremely important to get the stuff adjusted, right? But the rebound, I'm about to show you how to do it. So you could leave right now, go to your buddy's bike and actually do the rebound yourself. So I'm gonna show you a demonstration of what the test you could do in order to do this stuff, and then actually how to set it. By the way, if you go get the book, Total Control, second edition by Lee Parks, there's two chapters on suspension. One just tells you general information about what it is. The back chapter, I think 11, tells you actually how to do everything I'm about to do, plus a whole lot more. So get the, go get the book, read some stuff, go set it up. So let's go back to the R3. So this is the test for rebound damping. So you're gonna bring the bike up, bike's in first gear, not roll anywhere, kick stand up, hold on to the front brake. I'm gonna push down really hard and fast at the angle of the forks. Not just straight down, not just forward but push down at the angle of the forks. I'm gonna push down as hard as I can and then almost let go of it completely because I don't wanna force it back up because it's not gonna do what I want it to do if I add too much energy into it, if I pull it back. So I'm gonna push down really hard, hold on to the front brake so it doesn't go anywhere and then just let it rebound and see what it does. What you want the bike to do is I'll push it down, it should come up really, really fast and then settle a tiny bit, like a half of an inch. Why do you want to do that? So you want it to rebound really fast because ideal perfect suspension is you're going down the road and the tire will do this underneath you and you won't move. This is perfect suspension. You see what I'm saying? So think about a horse or a guy riding a horse, like racing. The guy's on top, not really moving that much, but the horse is going crazy underneath. That's good suspension, you see what I'm saying? So here's your bike, here's the tire. It doesn't, it's not supposed to move. So the test, you push down really hard, it should bounce up and then settle a tiny bit. It's gonna settle a tiny bit, you want it to, because the weight of the engine is up front. So just because of that, all that extra weight, it's gonna settle. So with a non-adjustable bike, let's see what the behavior of the bike does. So again, what is it supposed to look like when I do the test? I push down, it's supposed to do what? Compress. Come up really fast, yeah, as fast as possible, and then a tiny bit of settle. Let's see what this bike does. How many bounces did you see after I let it go? Two. It keeps on bouncing. So non-adjustable suspension, you're stuck like Chuck. You have what you have, and you have to just you gotta manage it, that's all you can do. So of course you could buy upgraded suspension, you could get gold valve emulators from Racetech, or you could just deal with what you got until you actually get good enough to reach the potential of the bike and get new suspension, or just buy new suspension if you want to. But either way, this is what you have, that's what you have. So let's check out this bike. Not just both suspension. So it should see the behavior, depending on a whole bunch of variables. Kick stand up, you're in first gear, hold on to the front brake. I'm gonna push down really hard at the angle of the forks and then let go, hold on to the brake. Let's see what it does. How many bounces did you see? Two. Two. Three. Three. So it's bouncing around a lot, right? 
stuck like Chuck, can't do anything about it, it's non-adjustable. So right now, imagine what this is doing is the needle is all the way out. That, that's the way to correlate that. There, there's not enough damping. Because all there is inside of here, the oil in the forks, there's a spring and there's oil in there, and there's just holes drilled out at the bottom of in the inside. And they're just going in and out of the hole, and there's nothing restricting it. So it's just, that's why it's doing that. And keep in mind, most pipes are either set up for, it's either one extreme or the other. Not many are in the middle. Either performance, R6, or comfort, on this side of the spectrum. Not many bikes are made for both. They're either performance or they're comfort, so FYI. We'll do one more example. KTM. Pull to the front brake. I push down at the angle of the forks. So it comes up and then it sinks down a whole bunch, like way more than what it's supposed to, right? So again, non-adjustable forks or non-adjustable suspension. Can't do much with it. Some people say, like they said uh, a couple days ago, they asked me, well, I could just pour more oil. Or I'll just put thicker oil in it, okay? Now you have syrup going through. It might feel tighter and less bouncy initially, but if you hit a bump that's any, that's any sharper than just a low, slow, easy bump, it's gonna feel like you bottom out very quickly, but you actually get to something called hydraulic lock, where just you can't push so much oil through a little tiny hole, it's gonna stop. See what I'm saying? Highly recommend reading Tow Patrol, go to someone that actually knows what the hell they're doing to get this shit set up. Or, you can listen to what I'm saying. This is how you actually do rebound. So now we got the R6. So I haven't touched this bike yet, and I have permission to touch it, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so first, I'm gonna do the test just to see what it does of the way it's set right now, and then we're actually gonna show you how to do this. So again, same exact test. Stand up, pull into the front brake, and push down and see what it does. Comes up and settles a little bit. Is that, is that what it looks like it's doing? Yeah. You guys tell me. Yep. Yeah, looks looks pretty good. good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's not good enough and you're not gonna learn much right there because what if it's all jacked up? You buy a bike and you have no clue. So, this is what I'm gonna do. And if you come back again, again, preload, that's the air in the air mattress. T-E-N is the translation for the Japanese word of uh, rebound, so there's no word that translates, so there's but tension. Then compression. Can you do compression standing still? No. No, you have to go on a bumpy, off-camber, uphill, downhill road and play with it while you're moving. Well, not, obviously not while you're moving, moving, but you ride back and forth, get off the bike, play with it. Ride back and forth, get off the bike, play with it. That's how you adjust that. But the rebound, T-E-N, we could do that right now. Okay, so right now it looks pretty good, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to believe it looks pretty good, or like I think so. I want to make sure it is. So right now I'm gonna take the tension out. I mean, I'm gonna take the needle up out of the hole. So it's, we're gonna. I just want you to see what it looks like, what it behaves like. When I take the needle out of the hole, how should this bike behave in relation to the other three? It should look just like that because I'm taking the needle out of the hole. Right now these three bikes, you could imagine it in the simplest terms. The needle is out because there is no needle. It's just flowing. So I'm gonna take the needle all the way out. Now let's see what this bike does. Let's see if we could hear it. Click. Click. So some bikes have clicks. Some bikes just keep on rotating. There's no clicks. But either way, remember how many clicks you do. Right? So you could tell. So first I'm just going to take the needle all the way out. And I'm not really counting. I don't care because we're going to figure this out anyway. There we go. Once you feel any bit of tension, you're not going to keep cranking on it because you could jack up the bike very quickly. It's very sensitive. Whatever you do to one side, you could do to the other. Now keep in mind, like the R3, they want to make a whole bunch of those bikes and they want to make it pretty cheap. It's not a $10,000 bike, so they don't have fully adjustable suspension in it. Sometimes they, the bike might just be rebound only, but they might only do it on one side. Well, the forks are connected anyway, so it'll behave on the other side as well. So just to make it a little bit cooler, they might put just rebound on one side, but not on both sides. Or you get a fully capable bike, fully suspension, everything. That's why this bike is way more expensive. Look, at the, look what it has on the bike, right? So right now I just took the needle all the way up out of the hole. So when I do the same test, what should you expect to see? It's gonna be mushy, it's gonna be bouncing around forever. Let's see what it does. Go into the front brake, push down at the angle of the forks. How many settles did you see that time? So now it's behaving as if we did not have any adjustability at all. I was thinking, you bought the bike, did you ever touch the suspension? I did. Nope. And just because someone is a mechanic, or they work at a motorcycle store does not mean they have no idea they have any idea of what i'm talking about right now keep in mind i went to this really big popular bike store a couple weeks ago just for fun kind of walking around i was sitting on a brand new gsxr 1000 fully adjustable and the guy came up to me he's like i'm like hey what's all this stuff do and he's like ah that's a fast bike bro you should get it <laughs> verbatim no clue so just because someone has a title they're selling the crap you educate yourself don't rely on someone else to actually know what they're doing because very few people do to show a comparison again, I just took the needle all the way out. Now I'm gonna push the needle all the way back in. What do you expect to see with the needle all the way in, restricting the amount of oil? 
What do you think? What do you think it's gonna look like? It's gonna come up very slow. It's gonna come up very slow. It might even come up so slow, slow that it's gonna just keep on coming up even after I'm done moving. It might be like, <laughs> like very, very slowly, right? So I'm pushing the needle in and you can see I'm actually going in. That's what the needle is doing. I'm just pushing the thing in. Again, we all understand this. Needle into a hole, out of a hole. We're just restricting the amount of oil that's able to flow. It's very, very simple. This is not a black art. This is not black magic. This is the simplest thing in the world. Let's, let's see it's explained, right? So I feel a little bit of tension. I'm gonna stop moving. I'm not gonna crank the needle down into there because it might get stuck and I can't pull it back out. And now I have to buy a new $20,000 bike because this is, right? So don't do that. All right. Now I push the needle all the way back in. I'm gonna do the same test. Kick stand up, launch the front brake. Now you tell me what, so first remind me, what is this supposed to do? Go down, come up, and down. Down. Come up slow or come up fast? fast? Come up as fast as possible, then settle a tiny bit. Now let's see what it does. It comes up, but does it? No, yeah. It doesn't settle. It doesn't even look like it's fully coming all the way up. Right. It, it's not even fully coming up, and it's not setting all. It's just going like this. And it's just coming up slowly like that. Again, too much damping. You push the needle too far in. You hit a bump. It compresses, but it's too slow to rebound. You hit another bump, another bump, another bump. Now you have no more uh, suspension left because it's fully compacted. Very easy. The low side crashed. It's bad. So how to actually get it set to where I want it to be. So I just showed you the extremes. I took it all the way out. I put it all the way back in just to show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to start taking the needle out and keep on repeating the test until it gets to the point where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna do, now I need to pay attention to how many clicks I do so I can do both on the same side, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, I just pick seven. It doesn't really matter, because you're just, you're gonna do the experiment, right? Do the test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I pulled out a little bit, right? A little bit more oil can flow through. Let's see what it does. How much settle is it? Is it like a half inch or is it too much? It's about, yeah, less than an inch, I think. Hard to tell. I don't want to be, I don't want to guess. I want to be exact. So I want to take it out a couple more to see what it does. And then we can always put it right back in. So right now it's seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. So I took the needle out more, more oil can now flow through. Let's see if it settles too much, too little. What do you expect to see? more because I took the needle out so it could behave, they could flow easier, right? That's too, yeah, too much. It's too much. It's like it's now it's too much, yeah. exactly right. So now you know it goes along with what I'm teaching you. Yeah. If we just saw something totally different, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about because the experiment does not reach the predictability, right? Basic scientific method, right? So it's nine, I wanna go back in. So it was going too much. Should I go two back in, one back in, go back to seven, stay at eight? What do you recommend? Seven is pretty good, actually. Or right. go to six and see what happens. There we go. We went too far that. out. Now nah, it's too much. We went back to seven where we thought it looked pretty good. Let's go to six and see if that's let's see what it does. So I'm at nine. I'm gonna go back in, right? Pushing it back in. Eight, seven, six. Do a test again, kick stand up, pull into the front brake. Now let's see what it does. There's a the tiny settles, what we want. It's gonna settle because you got the weight of the engine and everything else, but it, you just don't want it to be like this much settle. It should just be a little bit. Yeah, it's like that much. Like an inch. Yeah, cool. There you go. How about that? Look at that. And of course, I, if I push harder one time and softer the next time, I'm gonna get different results. So whoever's doing this, you need to make sure you're trying to be very consistent in how hard you're pushing down at the right angle. That looks and feels pretty good to me. It looks great. Now, what do you suppose the test is for the rear? Not sitting on it, but it's pretty much identical, the same exact test, but there's no more settle. So the rear, because there's no weight. So I'm gonna push down like I'm doing a chest compression, CPR. Make sure you guys know CPR. <laughs> if someone drops down, there's no heartbeat, no breathing. You might wanna know, you wanna start pumping, right? 30 and two, it's easy. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the bike up. I actually need your help, so come on over. I'm gonna have you just, uh, actually it's your bike, you get over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna have you hold the front brake like this, bring the bike upright, and your job is not to let the bike move whatsoever. Help you out. Pull out to the front brake. Try to keep it straight up and down so it's balanced, right? And then no, you got the front brake, so your job is not to let it move. Stand up. So I'm gonna push down really hard straight down, and now it should come up as fast as possible, but no movement whatsoever. It might wiggle, but that's the weight of the fluid and everything else, but it should just go 
and not move. Let's see what it does. But if it's going up and it's wiggling, the needle might be too far out, allows the, allowing the oil to go in and out. So right now, to me, just by doing that, it feels like it's not enough damping. It feels like the needle is too far out, causing it to bounce at the top. So hold the bike like it is. So on the front, usually, generally, you have to look at your owner's manual and look at your bike. We usually rebound is up front, compression is on the bottom for most bikes. This is a really high-end bike, so both rebound and compression is on top. But on the street triple, on the speed triple over there, whatever it is, street triple, rebound's on top, compression on the bottom. But for most bikes, again, this is general, it's gonna be swapped for the rear. Compression will be on the top and rebound will be on the bottom. So I'm gonna go, to the, I'm gonna go back to the rebound on the bottom and I'm gonna take the needle out, see what it does. I'll push the needle back in, see what, pretty much repeat the experiment just to show you guys the visual of what it's supposed to do and what it's not supposed to do, right? So this is kind of hard to see, but up here you can see. So if you kind of get in the camera, I think you get it right there. You can see C-O-M-P, right there are the words. So you know it's compression. It's the same adjustment, right? So if that's compression, you know it is 100%. It doesn't say anything on the bottom, but it obviously has to be rebound because that's just compression. So I'm gonna go down and inside here, it's at the bottom of the fork of the shock right here. Here's the little tool again. And I put it in there, there you go. And I'm gonna take it out all the way. So I'm gonna take all the needle completely out of the hole. You can actually see the little, whatever it is coming out. There you go, it's all the way out. So it already felt like to me, because it was bouncing out the top, it was out a little bit too much already. So now I took it all the way out. What do you expect to see? More bounce. More bounce, exactly. See that? Look okay. at Yeah. Oh yeah. And again, if it's too much, you hit a bump, you hit a bump, you hit a bump, it's just gonna be flowing, there's nothing slowing it down. Now keep in mind, for compression damping, you probably need a little bit less and a little bit more because when you hit a bump, most of the work is being done by the shock anyway. But when all that weight and all that force go, compresses up, there's nothing holding it back for the rebound. That's why rebound needs to be very, very exact. Well, compression does too, but you know what I'm saying? The, the shock does a lot of the work by itself. So it's too much bouncing, right? So now I'm gonna go, you guys already know the test. I would normally go all the way back in to keep on doing that, but right now it's all the way out. So now I'm just gonna start pushing in, say five. We'll do the test, do it again, maybe push in a little bit more, take a little bit out. I'm not gonna go to either extreme right now because we just did it, so just FYI. So I'm just gonna push it in, push the needle back in the hole, say five clicks. See if I get inside there. If you had a longer tool, of course, this is a really good idea. This thing is really short, but one, two, three, four, five. All right. What is it supposed to do? And what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing, you guys coach me through. Same force as before, straight down. So I'm pushing out as hard as I can. Yeah. Do I do I let it off completely? What do I do? I push it down and then what? I let go. And what do you expect to see? It should shoot up. It should shoot up slowly. No, fast. Shoot up fast and then bounce. Little. Shoot up completely fast and not move. That's what it does. Still bouncing. Still bouncing around. Still stuck on right. So do I need to add more damping? Or less damping? More, more. I need to add more. I need to push the needle a little bit back in to, to restrict it a little bit more so it's no more bouncing at the top. So that was five clicks, right? What do you recommend I do? Seven. A couple more? Maybe two? Two or three. Two or three? All right. Put this bad boy in there. One, two, three. and then stop. So that's pretty good to me. So I'm trying to watch the cement with the background of my vision looking at the edge of the bike to see if it's still... Let me go one more in and see if that does anything different. Well, it's definitely gonna do something different, but I want it to behave in the way I want it to behave, right? I want it to be set correctly. There you go. One more. Question. Yeah. 
Down up. Yeah. What are we seeing? Yeah, good. Goes up. Yeah, and the awesome. weight of the fuel I mean, is wiggling around. So, but taking that all aside, what I'm looking for is that it's not going up and then dropping down and then settling. Right. I want it to go up and then maybe I'll settle a tiny bit just because of the fuel. But right there, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Kicks bang that down. He leans onto the bike. There you go, just saved you hundred bucks for free. Thanks, right? man. <laughs> so keep in mind, so I want you guys to basically understand, if you go up and look at a bike, at least have an understanding of what this crap is. Preload, think about blowing air into the air mattress. More preload, the bike will sag less when you jump on top of it. You take out the preload, you'll sag more. And you want it to sag about a third of the way. Right, retail control will tell you all about the numbers and how to do it, you can measure the stuff, very simple. And the rebound, all you're doing is restricting the oil or taking the needle out so you can have more oil flow. And that is exactly how you test for rebound. And once you're done, you're done, you're good. Of course, I recommend after what, I don't know, however many thousands of miles of oil, it starts to wear thinner and thinner, and then it'll start to behave differently, change the oil out of the forks. You go buy a used bike. A question you might want to ask is, hey, did you ever do anything with the suspension? Is this the same oil from 10 years ago, this bike? Or did you change it? Did you upgrade it? Did you do anything? Right, ask the questions. But either way, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm sure I have a lot of questions about this. My number one answer I'm gonna give a lot of you First, go read Toll Control Edition 2 by Lee Parks. If that doesn't answer your damn question, take the course and ask one of the instructors who actually do this out on the course, and then I'll answer a couple of questions. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching together.